All right, so we're going to talk about art stealing. Art thievery? Art thievery and, and people out there trying to sell things that uh, don't necessarily belong to them. Hola, you amazing artist. So today we're going to talk about uh, what happens with uh, copyright infringement and all that stuff. I want to make it very clear that this is not a legal advice video. I am not a lawyer, thus I cannot give you any legal advice. And so the topics in this video, I'm not going to cover any of that stuff with, uh, with lawyers and stuff like that. If you need a lawyer for any kind of copyright infringement, then contact one, please. Recently, not too long ago, uh, we noticed that I had a piece of art that was out there on the internet that was not out there on the internet because I put it out there. In other words, it had nothing to do with you except that it belonged to you. Yeah, exactly. So it's late and we're in jammies and I have my hair in a samurai bun and I normally would not be filming anything at this hour, but these are special circumstances. Okay, so explain what's happening here. So... I was Googling myself because that's what I do every once in a while just to see if anybody's talking anything about me. And I found my mug on Amazon. Let me see if I can... Yep, there yep. it is. That's my mug. That is definitely your mug, except you're not the I'm one... I'm not the one selling it. Tony Curlyist is the one selling it. Which... You know, is all right, except Tony Curlist only has two stars. Approval. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's no good. That means that some douchebag is selling my stuff and not even taking care of the customers that is buying it. You should totally order one, dude. <laughs> and have it shipped to Rafi Perez. I know, it says deliver to Rafi. A eat sleep Rafi Perez. Not eat sleep art mug. Eat Sleep Rafi Perez. So if any of you want to eat sleep Rafi Perez... It's there on Amazon. Yep. Essentially what happened was I was going through and looking at uh, different items. And I, I'll give you guys the websites that I use to check the internet to make sure that there isn't stuff out there that uh, that is mine that is being sold. It was on Amazon. So that's the first time that I've had something of mine actually selling on Amazon. I've had it selling on several different places. Uh, but this is this is the first time it's on Amazon. You know what that means, right? What's it mean? You've hit the big time. Yes. You've made it. Yes. Finally. Golf clap. <laughs> So one of the methods that I use in order to stay updated on whether or not there's anything on the internet is doing Google Alert. So if you go on Google or type in Google Alert, you'll see how you could set up your Google in order to notify you whenever something has a certain keyword or name or anything like that. There's another really cool website that I use and it's called tineye.com. And tineye.com, if you go to their image search, you could actually put the URL of one of your images that you have on your website and then it scours the internet to see if it could find that same image somewhere else. So if somebody else is using your image, it'll pop up on that search algorithm. That's pretty neat technology. I know, it's really cool. I like going on there and looking at stuff. Uh, the only problem is that if you have mock-ups that you've used, um, it'll pull up every mock-up. So you'll see that same room with like your artwork and a bunch of other people's artwork. Oh, right. That makes the sense. Yeah, it kind of makes it feel lame. All right. So the first thing you're going to want to do uh, is when you're looking at something, determine if it is actually theft. All right. So before you can make any claims or anything like that or get upset about it, make sure that it's theft. Just because you paint trees doesn't mean that everybody that paints trees out there is stealing from you. Even if you use a certain color palette, it doesn't mean that it's them stealing from you. Somebody may be inspired by your work, and so you'll see similarities in it, but unless it is the exact same image, then I, I don't allow myself to get upset about it. I know that maybe my work inspired this, but it's not... Um, they're not necessarily ripping me off. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Rafi inspired artwork out there. Yeah. This one in particular because it has your signature on it. Yeah, this one has my signature and it is the exact same image that I created. <laughs> so this, this is definitely uh, something that was stolen. I've been approached by artists who will apologize to me because they'll paint, uh, like, I have my Seasons of Change trees, which... Uh, people love to uh, get inspired by. And I have people that approach me and say, 
oh, I'm, you know, I'm really sorry. You know, you're, you're not mad because I'm creating trees on wood. And I'm like, I didn't invent painting trees on wood. People have been painting trees on wood for hundreds of years. No, I don't, I don't care. You, you have every right to do whatever it is that you want. Now, if they're taking my image and they're using it on their stuff, for example, uh, with the biggest thing would be like t-shirts or like somebody creating a mold of a sculpture that I did or something like that, then in that case to me, then now you are really stealing my stuff and you're trying to sell it out there and pawn it off as your own. What I do recommend is that you look a little deeper into copyright laws. Obviously, whenever you create something um, and it is a tangible thing, it is copyrighted, but there are extra steps that you could take to really protect yourself when it comes to copyright infringement and all of that. I actually have a video that I did on copyright laws but I would look at the copyright website and see what their advice is because that will be a lot more up to date. In these situations, you want to really stop and think about the best way to deal with it. Obviously, right off the cuff, it's easy to just get upset and be like, oh, they're stealing my stuff, I'm gonna sue them. But really, you gotta take a look at the situation and determine like, what is the best route to take when it comes to this? Because unless they are selling millions of copies of the work, then really financially, what are you gonna do as far as like suing them? A lot of people think like, oh, I'm gonna sue them. Uh, especially when, depending on what platform they're on, you could just contact the platform that they're on and tell them this is violating copyright infringement. This needs to be taken down. They're on their way to purchasing a yacht via your products. Maybe pursue it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they if they have a yacht or a Lamborghini, then I'd be like, all right, you you got to do something. But even in that case, just contact the lawyer to find out what is best. What is the best option for you to take? Fisticuffs. Fist. The, don't fight. We... Dance battle. Oh, God. Yes, dance battle. Break dancing. Break dancing is now going to be an Olympic sport. So, yeah. yeah. Which is awesome. One of the main things I recommend that you do right off the bat is that you photograph, like take a screenshot of the work, uh, take a screenshot of your original work, uh, take note of the date that you found it and the date that your work was up, just so you could have all that paperwork just in case uh, you decide to pursue it in the future. The other advice that I read about on the internet when it comes to this is a cease and desist letter and they have like templates that you could pretty much copy on there. Um, I don't know enough about that. So uh, that would be something that you wanna contact somebody who legally knows about cease and desist letters. So maybe don't just be like, dear sir or madam, cease and desist. Thank I, you, have a nice day. I mean, I would, <laughs> I personally would just contact the platform and tell them like, this person is violating copyright. Uh, here's the proof of it, here's the screenshots please take that down. And usually the platforms uh, don't want to get in trouble because they're kind of involved in all of that. So they'll, they usually go for it. Now, a lot of times you may be dealing with somebody who has it on their own website. And then in that case, you may run into some other issues with them. Recently, I got a message from Julie R and she's been doing this for a long time and has been dealing with uh, people actually making molds of her stuff and selling it. She's she's gone through a lawyer, she's gone through some nasty emails, she's gone through all that rigmarole. She contacted me to see how it is that I would deal with a situation like that. And the only thing I could think of, Julie, is you're going through a lot of heartache of what you think it means. You know that when you created your there was that feeling behind it. It wasn't about making money. And here's this person taking your idea and now they're just doing it to make money. Whenever it's come to things like that, even like with my with my uh, uh, mug being sold online, uh, my whole thought is like, good luck with that. Good luck with your inability to be original and creative and create your own thing. You're basically going to spend the rest of your life hanging on somebody else's coattails, hoping to find a good idea to inspire you to create the same exact damn thing. And you're never gonna be innovative. You're never going to move forward. You're always going to have to rely on somebody else's ideas to be able to make you money and always run the risk of getting sued by someone for doing something that you shouldn't be doing. Why don't you go out and create your own stuff? Meanwhile, us artists and creatives are continuing to be pioneers. Yeah, we're going to continue to move forward. We're going to continue to go. One thing that I would say, Julie, is that while you have your lawyers working on whatever it is that they're working on, I would try and see how I could turn this situation around to my advantage. So they're out there, they're selling their bootleg product basically, and you get to now 
separate your product from theirs. Maybe have a specialized stamp or a certificate of authenticity that ensures that this is an authentic piece, that everything else is a, a scam or a sham. I would use that in my marketing and my advertising, you know, get the real one here. Don't settle for the fakes. If they're out there trying to sell that product, it means that they're out there promoting that product. So in the meantime, while your lawyers are doing whatever they're doing, Take advantage of that promotion and set yourself apart from them so that even though people see it, then they could see that, oh, this is the real stuff. This is the authentic stuff. People will always want to buy the real and authentic unless they are cheap. Your people are not the people that go to Kirkland's just to buy a piece of art. Your people are the people that go to the artist to buy the art. Yeah, essentially you're like, my stuff is so popular that you have to make sure that you find the original, you know, the, the real deal. Don't don't settle for the, for the other crap. Yeah, I've seen a lot of artists actually have to do that. And I guarantee you, if I'm shopping for it, I want the person who originated the thing. Yeah, exactly. The thing about it is that whether it's artwork or makeup or whatever, the counterfeit industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. People are out there trying to make money off the coattails of other people, even to the point where like they're selling like drugs that are no good for you, saying that the, they're these kind of like they're people are counterfeiting and bootlegging everything all the things everything and unfortunately they're making a lot of money on it when it comes to original art or like something that i mass produce for example um like my t-shirt designs and stuff like that ideally you got to think about how much uh money potential money you'll be able to make off of that item and then that's where usually i consider whether or not it's something that I'm going to copyright, legally copyright, or if I'm just going to go with the, the automatic copyright that happens whenever I create a product. But again, that is all legal advice that I am not giving you. That is just my opinion. I would contact a lawyer when it comes to your art or anything that you are thinking about copywriting. The one thing that I want to make sure that I get across is this. Don't allow the fear of somebody taking your stuff to cause you to not share your stuff, to not put your stuff out there. You know, protect yourself, put out low resolution images and and uh, there are different ways that you could protect your images online. But usually what I do is I make it small, like low resolution images that somebody can't just grab and then make posters or paintings out of them. Don't stop putting your stuff online. Keep putting your stuff out there. Keep doing shows, keep uh, sharing your stuff across the internet on social media. Keep just putting your stuff out there. Don't allow some a-hole who doesn't have any imagination and has to steal from other people to stop you from you expanding and putting yourself out there. Yeah, because imitators are always going to exist. Yeah. But they got nothing on you. Yeah, they've got nothing on you. You've got imitators and then you've got innovators. You are the innovator. You're the one that created it. Just keep going. Keep doing it because the world needs people like you. The, the world doesn't need imitators. The world doesn't need bootleggers or people that are like doing counterfeit crap. We don't need those people. Unfortunately, there is a demand for those people because there are people out there that are very cheap. There are people out there that are looking for the real thing. And that's the majority of people. And then you have people that are looking for bargain basement uh, products. The, the one thing they look at is price and how where could I get this cheapest? Not worrying about what the quality of the thing actually is. Or unfortunately, they don't know the difference and that's where you're the original comes yep, in. The original. And the truth is that the more you put yourself out there and the more people know about you, the harder it is for counterfeiters to try and prove that they created the thing. So that's why I say like, don't, don't allow some, some counterfeiter to take your stuff and then cause you to stop because uh, that works against you. Just keep putting your stuff out there and keep innovating and keep moving forward. Don't pay attention to those people. Take whatever legal action it is that you need to take, but don't don't let those people ever discourage you from growing your career as an artist. A lot of times what happens is that if you do give in to those negative emotions right off the bat, they cloud your judgment. And so you want to be able to look at the situation pretty clear. Don't get upset. Don't get angry. Don't allow yourself to get discouraged. Just look at the situation and decide what am I going to do now from this point on. Realize it's a part of navigating your art career. It is a part of navigating the art career. Indeed. It's all part of it. 
And the worst thing you can do is avoid it. The best thing you can do is face it if it comes up. And whether you choose to send a stern letter or have a dance off or hire a lawyer is entirely up to you. I go for dance off. Dance off. You know what's the most upsetting about the Amazon thing with your cup? He's got a poor customer service rating. I know. He's that's not representing our brand. That's the part that I'm like, he's got two stars. Why are you selling my cup with my name on it and you've got bad customer service? Dear sir, do a better job selling my mug. Yeah. I want to see a five star rating next time I visit your store. If you're going to steal my art, at least, at least take care of your customers. <laughs> and that's it, you guys. Hopefully uh, there was some uh, informative information in this video for you. And I want to know if you guys have had any run-ins with this kind of thing. Um, just don't be negative and angry, but leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear like, what did you do? What, what thing did you do to get empowered when something like this happened? And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Klee. Adios. See what I did there? Ugh. I stole your sign off. <laughs> Good day.